Hello everyone, it's Thumper the Rabbit Rabbit. So more bad news for all you cave basers. I know you've been uh, asking in response to the last YouTube video and on Discord. Um, some of you have reached out about using HVHF sensors as a trigger for the turret circuits in cave bases as a way to save power. Uh, the bad news is, um, and I know a lot of you are now new to rust electricity because of the turret issue, uh, rust batteries don't act like real world batteries. A real world battery, if you had hooked one turret up to it, it would last longer than if you hooked 10 turrets up to it. Um, not in rust. In rust, uh, batteries are based on time, not on electrical capacity, as it were. So you hook up one turret or 10 turrets and this battery is gonna last four hours maximum, period. Large battery can hold a four hour charge. It always puts out 100 units whether you're using it or not. That's why it's critical that you have a blocker or a switch after a battery to keep it from draining because if you plug it into literally any other component, it'll start draining immediately, no matter what that is. So yeah. The magical world of rust electricity. So given that limitation, the way we actually achieve better efficiency in rust is by selecting a small battery versus a large battery. So the large batteries 100 units can go for four hours. Small battery puts out up to 10 units and it has uh, 15 minutes worth of capacity in it. Now why does that matter in the cave base? Well, your only source of power are these generators. These batteries are terrible. Um, in the real world, your cell phone runs for you know 20 hours or 12 hours or whatever on a charge and it takes like an hour to charge it. In Rust, batteries are limited to 80% charging efficiency. So that means if uh, you put a full 10 units of power into this battery, to put its 15 minutes of capacity back in takes about 20 minutes. So imagine a world where your cell phone runs for 10 hours, but it takes 15 hours to charge. Yep, that's how electricity works in Rust. <laughs> so the more power we put in up to its limit, the faster a battery charges. You can't put more than 10 into a small battery. You can't put more than 100 into a large battery. But if you're putting less than that in, then they charge slower. So given that the generator puts out 40, you can plug it into this small battery and it could charge three of these small batteries, um, even with components in between, um, at their full speed, which is 80%. So I've created a circuit that does just that and leverages that advantage. Uh, here's what this looks like. This whole circuit from here here over, so ignore the turret and large battery over here for a moment, but this circuit all over here is a generator that charges a two small batteries at 72% efficiency as opposed to 80% because I only had nine units of power left over. Believe me, I squeezed hard on this. Um, but the, the net output of this is that you get 15 minutes. If you fully charge these batteries from this generator, these batteries will run 15 minutes. You'll get 120 minutes of runtime out of the tank of gas in here, and it's set to run six charging cycles or 5.6 charging cycles for 20 minutes each to fill these up and then turn the generator off so that we're extending the life of this circuit to the maximum efficiency of these batteries and the maximum use of the generator for running the HVHF sensor while it's charging and then stopping and letting the batteries take over from there and then going back to the generator and so on and so forth. And so we're maximizing the efficiency of our fuel usage here and that results in 15 minutes from the battery, two hours of runtime from the generator, and we actually gain another 86.4 minutes from the batteries getting charged by the generator. That gets you a total of 3.7 hours of runtime uh, for 500 low grade fuel. Now, it's actually a little more than that because you gotta charge these up once before you leave, but um, that's another 20 minutes worth of fuel. So 
for a little over 500 low grade fuel, you can run an HBHF triggering circuit for 3.7 hours. What can you do with that triggering circuit? Well, you can get rid of all of the complexity I had on that other circuit for charging the large battery to run turrets and just give yourself a generator. Heck, you could reuse this one while you're online. Just unplug it and plug it in over here. Charge this battery up as much as you possibly can while you're online. It'll hold up to four hours because it's a large battery. And the way this works is anytime someone triggers the HBHF sensor, uh, it starts this timer, which I set to 60 seconds, because how long does it take to kill people coming into your base, you know, through the bucket? They come down, they get killed, it resets, next person comes down, if they trigger it again, it'll kill the next person. Um, if a minute is too long, shorten it to like 30 seconds so that it resets more quickly. I don't know how fast the bucket moves, you can go test that. So this, uh, because it's using an XOR switch to, uh, to cut the power to the uh, blocker that turns the battery on actually makes this a fail to armed circuit. So what that means is while you have power over here for 3.7 hours um, it's going to turn the turret on every time the source changes so every 20 minutes it's going to turn the turret on for your timer period so it's going to if it were a minute this is going to run five time five cycles of charging so it's going to burn five minutes from your battery where the turret's just on for no apparent reason. Um, expect that. It's normal. Don't worry about it. But when these batteries go dead and there's no more gas left here anymore, this HBHF is going to go dead. The good news is this is going to turn on as soon as this circuit goes dead. So you're saving this battery for 3.7 hours. And if you happen to have other teammates who can come on and refuel this, that will continue to extend the life of this battery. If you're offline for more than 3.7 hours, this whole triggering circuit dies, and this thing goes live until you get power back to the circuit again. So it will continue to defend your base until this large battery goes dead. When you get back on, you're going to have to charge this guy up with a generator and you're going to have to refuel this and get this charging going again so you can get this circuit alive. Um, but this is about the best I can see at the moment as a way to use a higher efficiency, lower power circuit to trigger the lower efficiency, high power circuit that can then run technically up to nine turrets because you only lose one from this blocker. So you get 99 units of power out of here. So is it ideal? I mean, if you're playing vanilla, you still got to come up with this gas. Like, sorry. Um, that's still a lot of cycles. That's still, you know, a few thousand in low grade every day if you wanted to keep this running all the time. The... Uh, the flip side of that is you don't have to keep this running all the time. I mean, you can fuel this up and just start it before you leave. You lose the f initial 15 minutes, but you can just say, I'm going to fuel this up when I leave the base. It's going to run for three and a half hours uh, to run this circuit, and uh, you're good to go. Uh, hopefully within three and a half hours you come back and can refuel this again. Um, otherwise, it's going to exhaust this battery and just keep the turret running all the time. There's very little room for extra components here. So um, are there smarter, logical ways to do this? Sure. Is there enough power to do it without going to a larger battery? Probably not. And of course, that means we're just back to the circuits I've already posted before that are low efficiency and take lots of fuel to run big circuits. So uh if you want to use the HBHF and gain a little bit of efficiency and runtime here, uh, this would be a way to do it. Uh, bottom line, net, um, it's still expensive. It's still lots of low-grade fuel. So I will post the link to this schematic uh, at the bottom of the video. Um, I know it's not going to make a lot of you happy, and it's not supposed to. This is the reality of rust just being stupid when it comes to electricity and now these turrets are electrified 
you all get to enjoy the same stupid the rest of us have been playing with for the last nine months. So uh, that's it. Uh, good luck and don't suck. <laughs>